Self-care, um, for me as an athlete, I would say I didn't really understand it at all. Especially being in a, in a combat sport, you know, it's, it's just all about, you know, you, you be macho, you be tough and you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And um, yeah, I, I didn't really understand how best to look after myself. Maybe I, I could have been more successful if I did. Um, but yeah, I didn't really understand it at all. Um, I'd say, yeah, it's probably only been the last last five or six years where I've, I've tried to take it a bit more serious. I think if, you know, if you're gonna, people talk about self-care, but I, I think you need to be able to look after yourself. You need to really understand yourself um, and spend time um, digging into your own personality, you know, and, and figuring out, you know, what can trigger stress responses in yourself and, and what, well, what type of things you like to do to deal with that? I could definitely relate or definitely reflect on, on times as, as an athlete where, you know, it's a massive time of year for everyone, not just the athletes, the staff, um, everyone who's kind of supported you to that point. The pressure starts to mount and ultimately I, I, I can remember feeling like it didn't really matter to me whether it was a World Championships or Paralympic Games or, or a local, you know, open tournament down the road. It, you know, winning and losing is still the same. Um, but I think the, the implications of, of an Olympics and Paralympics are bigger uh, and there's the sense of that from, from everyone around you. So, you know, people, people start to, people around me, I sense that there was, a, there's a, there was an, uh, an air of panic there. Uh, there, was, there was pressure to, to sometimes do things differently because it was, we're coming into game time. Uh, and I think, it, I think as, a, as an older, more experienced athlete, for me to be able to say, look, this has worked for me this, you know, till now, uh, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. I need to make sure that I'm, I'm aware of the challenges uh, and I can just I can, I can cut, um, manage them uh, effectively. Um, I didn't cope with um, missing out on Rio. It was probably the start of what made me think, do you know what, I need to actually put some effort into this to make, maintain that level of um, mental health and positive mental health that I needed to be able to compete. So I had some really difficult times in just not getting the time and the, the, the pressure of competing at trials and not getting the time and then seeing the closest people around me go on and go and achieve these incredible things. Um, it was amazing for them but really difficult that I wanted to be there with them and be part of it and if I had maybe sat down and dealt with it and used these skills that I may have now, uh, I was going to be would have been a lot better situation. I may have even been able to sort of start a bit earlier or be a little bit more direct in what I needed to do. To look after yourself, you really have to know yourself. And I think that comes with experience um, and uh, being honest with yourself, as obvious as it sounds, is actually not that easy. Especially when you're, um, say, a big guy like me, a heavyweight, and you're known for kicking people in the face. So people can kind of have a perception of you that, oh man, he's bulletproof. Oh man, it, 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 he must be you know, mentally so rock solid. And that is true, but there's times when you're not because we're all human. So having the ability to be honest with yourself, thinking, you know what, when I get in this particular situation, I have a tendency to do this, and that causes this to happen. Um, so to be able to analyze yourself to, to correct things, to make things better, to improve, to learn and, um, uh, and do better the next time. I really think it requires honesty and self-analysis. So to me, self-care is being honest with yourself, first and foremost. That's, um, I believe that's the only foundation you can build from. You've got to go out there. You've got to give it all you've got, but you've got to remember that it's sport and it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Enjoy it, take a breath, take it in. And also remember that you've got to, you've got to perform optimally as well. So check in with yourself, make sure that your energy levels are, are not dropping. And I think checking in with yourself is one, get your time to just sit and reflect, but also, I, I mean, last cycle, I buddied up with our psychologist, so she, was prepped on my triggers, so she could see if I, say, went in on myself and wasn't really interacting very much, and she could 
pull me aside or just ask the question, are you okay? We won an Olympic gold medal and the night that we won the Olympic gold medal was probably the last time we were together as a team. And we were left for two days in the Olympic environment. I was kind of like, right, what are we going to do now? And, you know, and I think what you end up doing is you end up looking inward quite a lot. And it's a massive, um, anti-climax is the wrong word, but it's a massive, you've been sort of at the forefront of something that is really very, very large. It's in the media, it's in TV, it's everywhere. And actually getting back down to earth is quite a challenge. Um, and you need to plan for that. And you need to purposely do things in that space. So I remember coming home from my first Olympics and at the time I was like 20, 21 years old, 22. I went back to my flat. I walked into my flat, I lived alone and I remember sitting down on the settee and going, oh my God, what do I do now? I think there's much more of a focus now on helping athletes to have you know, long and healthy careers and then to be able to go on to do something fulfilling after that. Um, and I think as sports organisations, certainly in shooting, our focus isn't just on developing great shooters, it's actually on developing great people um, and almost helping people to develop those kind of skills that actually aren't directly related to shooting, but ultimately you know, we know that if people are feeling like they are you know, they've got good balance in their lives, they're confident, they have direction, they're self-sufficient, like those things are going to impact their performance as well.